So welcome everybody. Welcome to Hassam podcast. Today is um, July the 18th and uh, 2024. So welcome, welcome. Um, the topic for today is continuation of self-sabotage. So hello everybody. Today is a continuation of self-sabotage. So a self-sabotage uh, session two. And um, last week I was just talking about um, talking about what is a self, the, the different components of, of what we think of as the self. And we'll talk a little bit about our soul, a bit about the components uh, that makes up our soul and the difference between like what how my terminology is, because people uh, different people may use different terminology. So for me, the soul and the spirit, how um, what I would mean, what I actually want to refer to when I say spirit and what I refer to when I say soul. So those are a little bit different. And so I kind of um, talked a little bit about that and talked a little bit about the um, why we self-sabotage. So we there are a lot of reasons. Um, one of them, you know, is is that innately because we are not just one um we're not just one thing we are a combination of things we are a combination of a body and a soul living and um, kind of living a life that is designed by this by our spirit so we so there are different components so when when the body and the soul are not quite aligned, then you would have this this idea of you know you're self sabotaging because um, one body wants to do one thing and your soul may may be up for something else. So sometimes the soul may be very um, a lot of the times the soul may be very ad adventurous. So the body not so much because the body has to um, you know worry about. You know, being able to survive in all the, the activities that the, the soul was signing up for. So that's why there's sometimes maybe some misalignments. And also we um, we are born into families which has their own dynamics. So sometimes we picked up some um, beliefs and customs and culture which does not quite resonate with our soul. So then there are those internal conflicts that kind of um, we may not always are conscious of those internal conflicts. However, they may come up as self-sabotage. So talk, talked about that last time. So this time, though, um, it's kind of last week I opened up a can of worms, but I didn't quite talk about how to deal with this can of worms. So this session is more about, so now that we are getting to the point where okay how what do i need to do in order to um stop sabotaging ourselves so this is our main topic for today and we're going to do uh, a number of processes that may be helpful to assist you in getting all the different i would say parts of yourself to to become aligned so that when you go forward to live a life that then um you are like all system is a goal not you're not you know one one part of you is going backwards one part of you is going forwards any questions so far not really okay so let me just take a look at my notes so i would Okay, so um, so talking about the uh, the ways of making sure that we no longer sabotage ourselves. There are many reasons why we sabotage ourselves, and um, however, the there is actually just of all the reasons, of all the, the, the all of those, there is actually just one underlying cause of that. So that one underlying is really disconnection. 
is that we are disconnected from who we truly are. And how come we're disconnected? Well, for one thing, we we have this, we, we come in through a, a body. So we experience this reality through our body. And we're born and then, um, you know, the body does not come with uh, these these menu, this owner's menu, and it does, and nobody ever talked to us. As at least my mom, my parents, none of them, not not any of my relatives ever told me that you know, you have a soul and you have a body and you have to you know um, integrate the two. You know nothing. And nobody ever told me anything about that when I was growing up. You know, after a while when I go and do some searching on my own. Yes, I do find out some of these things, but um, these, most people uh, are just not introduced that, you know, there's this thing about um, how to make the body and the soul come together, how to align yourself. So those things are really never talked too much about in most households. Most, you know, meaning more than 50% is um, maybe nowadays there'll be more talk because we are getting to be more um, awakened about that. But I think if you now say that, you know, there's when you talk about the soul now, um, most people would kind of know what you're talking about. They may not um, agree with you that there is a soul, but at least they know what you're talking about. Whereas, you know, when I was born, a couple decades ago, you know, nobody really talked about the that there's a thing called the soul and that it's different. It's just a subtle body that you can't see it. Um, you only experience this world through the body. You know, those things are just never talked about. So no wonder we're disconnected because we have this, we are this, we are actually the soul experiencing life through this body but we were never told that this is the case we um, most of the time we are um, focused life has been focused only almost exclusively on just the physical the physicality you know the the what you so your body is the only thing you have so this this is it and so when there is so much ignorance about what the soul is and what the, the 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 body functions, the relationship between the body and the soul, so we don't know. That's why the the body kind of just try to function as though there is no soul, and then the soul tries to steer the body or experience this reality through the body, but because the, the soul um, don't always know how to communicate these through our consciousness. So there is this miscommunication between the, the soul and our consciousness. So a lot of times we don't know what our soul wants. We just, you know, thinking and we think our mind is our soul. Not really, not exactly. So that's why there's this disconnection. So this connection is really the underlying issue between this um, that is causing our self sabotage. So I just want to throw this out. Um, <clears throat> and then, so what is the antidote to that? Is really connection. Is to start to find the connection between um, body and the soul and the spirit as well, even though the soul and the spirit are kind of the same, but not exactly. So, so then how do we align ourselves so that the body and the soul is working according to what the spirit ultimately wants us to achieve in this lifetime? The first thing I want to ad address, the first first part I want to address is really the body, because 
the body is something that we can see, we can we can work with first. And um, I know when people first become more spiritual, there is, or a lot of the times we we think that spirit when spiritual people think is that you know um, is to kind of downgrade the body. However, my understanding is that the um, the soul does not need to evolve. The idea of evolution is actually to evolve with the body. So it is the it is the body that allows us to understand what the um, the soul's intention. How does it translate into um, the the uh, physical form. So this is actually why the soul takes on a body. If the soul can evolve without a body, if the, the soul is something that is um, above and beyond the body and, and it's so high and mighty, then there, there really is no reason to come in in an incarnation. So the first thing to to really grasp is that the soul and the body is has to come together the soul can just go and and do its thing and think that you know okay that so that is the the mission no the mission is actually to incarnate to be in the body to work with the body to experience this reality through the body so then the soul and the body has to come to um, some sort of integration, agreement, integration, and being able to work with one another, the, the two. So, but because the, the body is the um, physical form, so I would start with the body first. To when we talk about this. So um, I know for myself it's true is when I first kind of um, woken, woken up to the, the, the thing that, you know, I actually, me, the real me is actually the, the soul and the spirit, not the body. We are experiencing the world through the body. And so there is this really looking down on the body. So when you look down on a body, then um, you, there's a lot of projection, a little judgment, and you, and you kind of um, put the the soul's mission above the the body, the the well-being of the body, and um, so that's why it's not grounded. A lot of the times, you you would meet spiritual people that are totally ungrounded. And um, they they can talk to you know high vibrational beings. They can do a lot of stuff in the etheric and astral realm, but they can't really manifest so much in the material world. That's because of that disconnection between the body and the soul. So first thing to create that connection between the body and the soul is, is to really take care of the body. That's really step number one is take care of the body. You know, what do you mean by take care of the body? Don't we all take care of the body? We eat, we make clothing, we make sure we have you no know, um, place to, to, to sleep and a roof over our head. That's taking care of the body. No, not really. It's, it's, it's not just about that. It's actually to listen to what the body wants um, above all else. So, so when we do that, when we really um, do that, then we are actually allowing the body to recuperate and heal itself much better. 
um, the first thing is to spend time just being with your body. So what do I mean by spend time with your body? Um, so what I do, I would say first thing in the morning, usually after I, I wake up, I would just do not be a meditation because usually first time when I, first thing in the morning when I wake up, I may not be um, mentally alert enough to to do meditation. But you, and when it, when that happens, like what I usually do is just sit with my body, not even trying to meditate, not even trying to clear my mind. I just spend, I don't know, the first five minutes to just be with my body. So when I get out of bed, make sure I find a comfortable location so that I can either sit or um, stand or um, in, in a position that is fairly comfortable that I can be at for five to 10 minutes. So then what I do is I would um, do the, the, the brain coherence, heart coherence, gut coherence, and then brain, heart, and gut coherence. So when I do that, then it's like pretty much my all three of my um, major energetic centers are kind of align with each other. And then I would just take a few moments to just be with my body. I'm not trying to pray, I'm not trying to meditate, nothing. I'm just sitting with my body. So just listening to the body, feeling the body, allowing the body to relax. And um, it's, it's not a relax as in, because I just got out of bed. It's not a relax as in, you know, I need to go back to sleep again. But to just um, breathe properly, and also to, you know, depending on, you know, how, how I sleep the previous night, there may be some aches and pains in the body. So I just be with the body and also drop those, um, whatever that is left over from the previous night's sleep. So just be with the body. And usually, if there, even if I have any aches and pains, um, when I wake up after about a couple of minutes, the, the body actually just get to a point where it is awake, it is alert, but it's also relaxed at the same time. So I call that kind of um, alert relaxation. I don't know whether you guys know what I'm talking about. So um, that's why um, instead of talking more, I actually just want to do this with you all is to just spend the next, just, just use the next uh, five minutes to for everybody to just experience this. I know most of you are probably not just you know, woke up from your, your sleep and that's okay. I do that. Um, before I go to bed as well. And if I have time during the day, I would do that in the middle of the day as well. So a couple of times throughout the day, I would just spend a few minutes just with my body, me and my body. I'm not trying to do anything, just trying to sit with the body. So let's do that, okay? So everybody just take a deep breath in. And let it all go. And continue to breathe in and out through your nose. And as you do this breathing, um, just start to even out your breathing. 
meaning to make sure that you're not breathing too fast, nor too slow. But just breathe in and then out rhythmically. Allow your breathing to just come to a a very relaxed pace. It does not have to be particularly slow. Whatever it is that is still comfortable for you, it's fine. And as you breathe in and out, just make sure that you're breathing as though you're a baby, meaning that you breathe from your diaphragm. So not just chest breathing, but breathing, take your breathing lower. Make sure your belly actually comes out when you breathe in and your belly goes in as you breathe out. Wherever it is that you feel any tension in your body, Just allow that part of your body to relax. And then just focus on your brain and brain coherence activate. Give your body, your brain specifically, maybe 10, 15 seconds to just come into coherence. And then do the next one, heart coherence, activate. And then after another 10, 15 seconds, gut coherence activate. Brain, heart, and gut coherence activate. Just feel that there is this easy, effortless flow of energy between your gut, your heart, and your brain. When all three are in coherence with each other, and then just spend time with your body.
So take a deep breath in. Let it all go. Take another deep breath in. Let it all go. Take one more deep breath in. And let it all go. Open your eyes if your eyes have been closed. And come all the way back. And just give yourself a hug. Give your body a hug. Thank you for playing. So how is that? I like it. Yeah, I feel very refreshing too. Like, it's, um, so that's, so that's really just spending time with the body because we, we always have so many demands on the body, you know, do this, do that, you know. Not it. <laughs> we have so many demands for the body. We, we want so much. We judge our body and so many things. And then, you know, just for a few times a day, a few minutes each time to just be with the body. No demands, none whatsoever. The only thing that is required is to just be with the body. No demands, just communication just connecting connecting with the body listening to the body and um so when you do this more often then the body would um respond more to you i find that it's it's also can be very healing as well because a lot of the times our body is not kind of um, it's not doing so well because of our thoughts sometimes when we get emotional it's like the, the body has to put up a response it has to um, you know the, the brain has to or the the, the, the hormones have to be released so that we can create that emotions. So it actually stresses our body. But when we just be with the body, no emotions, no demands, just spending time with the body, it actually is a very healing experience. Okay, so that's the, that's the first um, process that I'm... It's not difficult. It's easy. Yep, it's easy. You can do it anywhere. Um, preferably a place where it, it, there's not too many things going on. But you know, it's, you don't like if you if you don't want, you don't even have to do the coherence and those things. But just be with the body for a few minutes. Don't think of anything, don't say anything, just be with the body. Just listen to the body. So that's part of connecting with the body. And um, and also it, it would be nice if you can check in with the body every time you try to do, you know, you know, um whether it is medication or food, water, or um, other decisions that involve the body, is to just check in with the body and see what the body wants and see what the body's response is. 
So that's also a part of um, connecting with the body. Can you give an examples on that? Um, well, examples on that. Um, let's see. So it could be food. So you are you if you are um, let's say deciding. Okay, so what food to eat it's just check in with the body a lot of times the body has a particular um, has particular needs which may seem bizarre to the conscious mind sometimes my body feels like it only needs vegetables and sometimes it needs some meat. So, um, however, if I always you know, go for meat or if I always go for vegetarian, then um, it's like the body does not really have a say in it. Yes, so, the problem is that we have um, been in our culture, we have been taught to override the body and shut the body off. Yeah. Very true. That's why, that's yeah. why, um, yeah, that's why it's good to connect with the body and ask the body these things. Because um, why would the body want to play with you or help you if you're just going to bulldoze over the body? Yeah. Because the body actually has a wisdom that we know nothing about. Mm -hmm. So sometimes um, I, would, I would suggest more often than not to let, allow the body to weigh in. So in, um, you know, a lot of the times you would say, I can't hear what my body wants to say, or, you know, I, I don't know what the body wants to say. You know, the body does not know how to talk. I mean, I know how to talk, but that's my mind doing it. Mm -hmm. Consciousness doing it. But if the body has different needs, then how do I do it? How do I know? And the, the thing is, if you regularly allow the body to weigh in on your decisions, on choices about, you know, okay, food choices, or it could be, um, you know, vacation choices, so those things, then your body would start to give you a better sense of what it wants. Hmm. And, you know, usually when the body hurts, then we try to shut it down, shut the <laughs> message off. Yeah. Yep. A lot of the times we may not understand why the body wants certain things mm -hmm. at the time. But then afterwards, we will... Um, get to to know okay how come so so might as well get into the habit of actually allow or give room for the body to weigh in and think, yes um, Sorry, go ahead i think that this is a big one for me um I'm so mad at my body. Because of what it feels that Ooh. I just, yeah. So first, maybe I have to make friends with the body and then <laughs> it will start um, working with me, yeah. Why not give that a try? Yeah. 
That, that's a huge aha for me. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Um, yeah, making friends with the body. And I do find that the body talks, but in different ways. And if, so when you actually notice the body, like doing things, like sitting with the body, it, you may not feel anything for the first day or even the first month. You may not feel anything, but after a while, you start to notice that the body has like um, the things that are good for the body. You can tell how your body responds to those things. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we eat whatever we want to eat, but we don't pay attention to the body's response to what it is that we eat. And same thing as the things that we do. So when we start to listen to the body, consciously take time to listen to the body. Then we notice the patterns of, you know, how my body feels after I've been to certain places. I know there are certain people when I, um, that I, um, certain friends, if I meet with them, then my stomach hurts. First time, I may not notice it. But um, second time, third time, then I know, oh, my, my body is trying to tell me something. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems like there's something that the body noticed that I don't notice, that I have not noticed yet. The body actually has so much more wisdom and um there are certain people when I talk to them, my body just feels completely open and I just, I have no idea why, but I just like being with that person. And my body knows. So my body is responding to something that my conscious mind just does not know. It's not aware of yet. So when you start to listen to your body, these, these things will start to come through you. And then you would um, be able to, it's it's like a uh, another language that you need to learn, the language of the body. And when you really learn that language, then there are so many things that you can um, add to your awareness that sometimes when your ego mind is just, okay, I need to do that. And, and so you just go with blinders on, you don't notice, but your body notice because your body has all of these different senses that you're not consciously aware of yet. So connecting with your body, communicating with your body, listening to the body. When you spend time with your body, your body actually heals easier and um yeah and you you can take advantage of the wisdom of the body which our conscious mind what my what our conscious mind think of as wisdom is not the same as what the, um, the body's wisdom can offer us it's just another dimension of that okay so next process so now that we we've kind of initiated this connection with the body so then um it's really about integrating the body and the soul and so the next thing is really connecting with our soul okay so i do have Another practice. I I did say that you know this time, this this time we're going to kind of more of a process um heavy because these processes are really 
suggestions, tools that if it resonate with you, please use them or um, kind of shape them and add things or take things out so that it can be yours. It, the, the practice, make it your own. These are just my suggestion. So I would, the next thing is really to connect the soul, connect with the soul and also connect with the spirit as well, the, the bigger part of ourselves as well. And sometimes when the soul is so um, focused on this, this environment, playing in, in, on earth, within this body sometimes it like it's like the soul is um, on the ground with the body and because it's on the ground so it can't quite see the big picture so when we connect the the body the soul and the spirit together then we can kind of get a better sense of not just being able to look at you know what we're doing or where we're going also know get a better sense of why why we need to have this experience or why we um, need to be here so so that's the so the second one is really connecting with our soul's unique signature so each each of our soul is unique and um because we are each a, a fragment of the whole, because all of us coming together is oneness. We're not there yet. We're not, um, we're not in oneness yet. That's why each of our soul actually has a unique soul signature, which is why we are here in this, in this environment to explore, to live out that unique soul signature and when we truly live out that unique soul signature and everyone else is doing the same then all of these unique soul signature come together as one sometime in the future or whenever it is that we can step beyond space and time so what I'm suggesting is to first is to set the intention that you want to connect with your unique soul signature. Then we do the um, brain, heart, and gut coherence, which brings the body in as well. And then we activate 3396-6693, 39-inch activate. And then we open up the real eye, zero point, and then activate the all. Because that is really our soul, the, the, the soul energy. So that is really the body, the soul. And then we are, our intention is to connect with our unique soul signature, which is, um, which kind of is a fractal of the spirit. So that's my suggestion of it. So let's do this second meditation then. Let me actually stop.